G'day everyone, welcome to the How To Gears of War 4 Lancer from EVA Foam Tutorial. My name is Andrew DFT, and let's get started. So to show you right off the bat, this is what you're going to be achieving by the end of these parts in this tutorial. A basic and simple EVA Foam Lancer that looks the part and isn't too hard to achieve, especially when this is aimed at beginners. So of course to show you what it can end up looking like, here's a simple quick paint job I quickly threw together before filming this to give you an idea that it can be painted up relatively nice to look like the, well, like the gun it's supposed to. You can add little features like little lights or whatever you wish to it to really personalize it and make it your own. Now to give this a difficulty rating, I will give it a 7 out of 10. It's not extremely difficult to make, but it does require a lot of patience, a lot of effort, and just um, a few days spare. Following each and every step-by-step -step section in the tutorial, as that's how I really love to teach you guys, as I find using time lapses a whole lot doesn't really benefit and teach you guys what you need to know, but this way is effective. So therefore you can take it, transform it, and have your own personal weapon in the end. Now of course you need templates, so you can go ahead and download the ones I've created specifically for this. I've tweaked them a bit so it allows us to go through the EVA foam construction process a lot more easier. But you can find them in a PDF via the link in the description box below. You're welcome. I'm kidding, anything I can do to help you guys, I'm more than happy to. So let's jump into it. I hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope you enjoy the construction process. And if some of you are trying for the very first time, I hope you discover something new and a creative side of you that you uh, learn to like. Otherwise, get into it. All right, so all you're gonna need is EVA foam. You can buy it in packs like this, which come in sheets of four. Then go grab the templates, which are accessed via the link in the description box below, print them off, assemble them together with some tape, and then cut them out so it looks like this. Then we're gonna break apart the template to go into the sections as seen above, and we'll work on the main core that you can see on screen. First things first, you're going to go ahead and transfer the template onto the foam, so you should have it transferred like this. You will need four copies, so what we're going to do is we'll first cut out the template from the foam. You want to be careful and take your time in this section because you want to make sure that you are going down vertically into the foam so that it comes out nice and clean. Once you have one of the sheets coming out, you're going to repeat the process for, like I said, four and being sure to flip at least one of them over so that way you have a left and a right side with both the nice side textures on. We don't want to have this kind of uh, greater texture showing at all. What you can then do is lay each one on top of itself to make sure it sits, uh, sits symmetrically and there are no uh, odd points sitting out. If there are, you can just simply carve them off with a nice sharp craft blade. Then grab some hot glue or some barge cement or whatever you prefer to use and go ahead and glue these all together. You can start by working from one end and working your way down to that end to make sure that it does set quite nicely and you have a nice adhesive um, stickiness going together so that way they don't fall apart in the end. Moving on, now we can start trimming this design. So what we'll do here is we'll grab the template and we'll cut off these edges. You should see them marked out nicely there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them out and then lay the template back onto the foam onto both sides and we'll transfer exactly where these negative areas that we've just cut out are on the actual structure. That should leave the imprint sitting there nice and clean so we can see exactly where we need to trim. But we're gonna bevel these edges. So to bevel, what we'll need to do is add a depth line. To add a depth line, you can simply grab a nice uh, sharp edge or a, a straight edge and draw it in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add it maybe three quarters of the way through the foam, not all the way because we don't wanna go near the grated uh, texture side, just three quarters of the way through that piece of foam so you should have these two sections, oh, these two lines marked out here. Then what you're going to do is grab the nice sharp craft blade and cut through on a 45 degree angle. Well, as close to 45 as you're going to get, which will uh, be course uh, meeting these two lines. This is it again from the back we're going through and as you can see the blade is meeting both the uh, internal and that depth line nicely to give us this lovely beveled edge which makes the design look a bit more rounded. Now what we can do is we can add some of the more detailed sections. So we'll cut off this bottom section here and we'll do what we did before and transfer the uh, position in using the negative side of it and you should have the line marked out nicely there. Now we're going to be using this technique on a lot of this design so it'll pay to get used to it so that way we don't have to continuously explain it in the video. So what we're doing here as well, we're repeating the same process, cutting out that negative section marking it in where it should be, and then we'll just continue the lines down the beveled edge to make sure it kind of wraps around. 
Now what we're doing is the exact same process. Like I said, we're going to be repeating this quite a bit, but I'm going to be showing you it on the video just so you guys know and don't miss a step. Otherwise, it is very easy to get lost if I let you go out and just do this by yourself, especially for you uh, beginners. But what we're doing, as you can see on the screen, is matching the step by step between what you've currently got in front of you and what is appearing on the screen. Breaking apart the template, transferring the lines where they should be in the real space, uh, using the negative section and just drawing them in. Don't worry about scoring at this point. We'll get to scoring much later on. If we did it now, you might uh, run into some issues. So do that when I actually uh, do that on the video. So when we're breaking apart this template, it is imperative that you do keep the templates stored somewhere safely to the side because you will uh, need them as reference or bring them back later on and you don't want to make sure you lose them because then you'll have to reprint stuff. So we're still going ahead and transferring across all these templates, making sure that we do match everything up nicely, well, as best as we can. I can't, you can't hope for perfection, but you can do as best as you can, and that's all that counts. So what we're doing here is we're breaking apart this template. We're gonna actually make two of them. Of course, we're gonna need a left and a right side, but we don't need them to be this thick. So we'll go ahead and add a depth line. You can do this again about three quarters of the way through towards the grated textured side. And then we'll grab the craft blade and we'll actually cut a vertical line through the middle of this. Now, a good way to do it is to grab another piece of foam and place it on the other side. That way it creates a barrier between the blade and your fingers, because you don't want to cut yourself when doing this. It's not that important to lose a finger and to have a, a lancer by the end of it. So all you're doing is running the blade through slowly, doing multiple passes until you finally reach the middle, and you should be able to separate it looking like this, giving us two nice thinner pieces. Then what we can do is we can start breaking apart this section of the template, of course. We've got this exterior semi-circle here on the end, and you can cut that apart, trace the line in, and then we can cut apart the perimeter line, which will give us this nice internal section, which of course, in the end, when we, bevel, uh, when we uh, score these and heat them up, they'll look fantastic and really lovely pieces of detail. But for now, we just need to put the time and effort into actually getting the lines on. Now to make sure we know where they're gonna sit, we do need to actually grab the template and put the negative kind of like line or um, guidelines in so we know where to glue it. If you were to glue it uh, willy-nilly or free, you wouldn't know exactly where it could go and you could have it a bit disjointed and look a bit odd. So this way we know exactly where we're gonna place it in relative to where the template actually put it. Now we're gonna start getting a bit more intense with the detail, we're going to start working on a bit more smaller sections which require a lot more effort on your part to make sure that they do sit in there nicely. So do take your time when applying these smaller internal pieces. If it doesn't fit in 100% to uh, what you've transferred onto the foam, you can cut the templates a bit to tweak it to make sure it does come out like this, but that's just going to be a bit of uh, trial and error and a bit of uh, working as you go on your part. I mean, not everything is going to appear exactly like it is on mine in the way that foam bends and the way that you transfer. So as long as you kind of work within the parameters of what you can see on the screen, you should have pretty much exactly what we're trying to achieve here. Now for this section, of course, we've got a bit more smaller detail that we have to add. We can also see that we've got to do these three circle sections, which soon you'll be able to do. And we'll actually have to do this quite often. But all we do is we're gonna cut out that smaller section using a craft blade. You don't need to use scissors for this. You can use a craft blade, place it onto the actual foam, and you should be able to transfer exactly where they're sitting onto the uh, foam lancer itself. Now the magazine, we're gonna do it as mounted. You could add it as adjustable or removable if you wanted, but for the beginner stage, we're gonna leave it as mounted. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna simply grab the template, transfer the negative section on, so we know exactly where it's gonna sit. Then we can cut out these internal segments, these three internal segments, and we're gonna transfer them on using the negative spacing, so we know exactly where those are gonna sit. Now once you've done that, we'll start to break apart the magazine a bit further, so we can cut off the base section here, and we'll transfer this, um, this end line, I guess you'd call it, the, the extension of the clip. Transfer that in, and then all we've got left to do is cut out these two little lines that will appear here, and simply transfer those into position. Remember, when you're doing this, you do want to make sure you are flipping it around and doing the exact same on the other side. That way you keep it cohesive and uh, in flow so you don't misplace the templates. All right, so now we're gonna start working on some larger detail. This is all gonna be stuff that we're gonna build up rather than just working into the current layer of foam. So what we'll do is we'll grab the template, transfer its actual location on, so that way we know where we're gonna be working and we can start building into this part. 
So what we'll do is we'll then grab that template and carve out two new sections, remembering to flip one of them so that we have a left and a right side. Then you can go ahead and cut out the circle part within the template and transfer that negative space of where the circle should sit into the foam. Then we'll start to break apart the template a bit further and transferring all these individual little segments onto both sides of the foam, remembering you do need to flip it to make sure that you account for the left and the right side. Once we've started to go through and we've broken apart the template as far as we can go, we're then going to start building it up another layer. To do that, what we'll do of course, we will uh, grab the circle section and what we'll do is we'll carve that out of another piece of foam. So you should have two, a left and a right. It doesn't really matter because they're circles, so it should be fine. So what we'll do then is we'll actually grab the circle and we'll start cutting in where you can see these internal circles within the larger circle, I guess you could say. Once we've got this internal circle, what we're going to do is we're going to actually add a depth line. And because we don't need this to be uh, this kind of acute and sharp, we want it to kind of bevel in a bit, we're going to add a three-quarter line about three quarters into the uh, thickness of the foam, which should take us towards the texture side. And then just like we did before when beveling the grip section, we're going to go ahead and carefully bevel this circle. Now I do recommend you swap out your blade so you have a very nice sharp blade for attempting this because this is a primary piece of detail that you will be seen in any photo or any display. So you want to make sure you have this nice trimmed edge like you can see here, a before and after. It looks well, a lot better. It might come out with these kind of riveted edges, but when we heat that up, that should really nice, uh, really smooth together with the heat, and you shouldn't have any problem with looking a bit rough. Then all you need to do is glue it in, and it should look relatively nice like that. But we're not done just yet. We don't want to leave it basic. We want to add some detail simply by, well, carving out the template like we did before and transferring in all the internal lines. Really, this is probably the most simple piece of detail on it, so be grateful this is <laughs> is an easy part to do because it is going to get a bit harder. And then all you've got left is to cut out this internal section using a craft blade rather than scissors. Put that into position with the, uh, the lines facing up towards the left. You can use that as note but make sure it goes up that way. And then glue it into position and glue the whole thing down. And now we've got an, two extra layers of detail which really give it a nicer 3D perspective. Okay, so now we're going to start working on a few more little pieces of detail before concluding this part one. So what we'll do is we'll cut out this section of the template and we'll cut out the three segments you can see here using a craft blade rather than scissors so we get this negative effect. Then what we can do is we can lay it onto the foam itself and we can transfer where they should be so that way we know. They might come off a bit scraggly and not very uh, horizontal and crisp but you can go back with a sharp edge and actually clean those lines up as it will benefit us later when we score them. Now what we're going to do, now what we're going to do, sorry, is cut out this weird odd shape. Now you can have a left and a right, so be sure to flip one of the sides. Now we don't need them to be this thick. So what we'll do is we'll uh, add a depth line about halfway through. We don't need to do it three quarters, we'll go halfway, make it a bit more thinner, and then grab your nice sharp craft blade and slice using mo multiple paths, uh, passes, sorry, to get the nice crisp sharp line that we need. Now what we can do is we can break apart the template so we have this negative space in the rectangle here and we can transfer on that line. Then you can actually simply just cut that segment out because we want it to have a nice 3D look. And then you can use that uh, template again to cut out this square section. Now using that negative slab you just cut out, we can actually use the template and we'll recycle it, so to speak. So we'll use the template to mark out this uh, section here and then we can simply break apart the template even further and add that internal square segment and cut it off. So we've just recycled that rectangle slab and used it for something else. Now what we're going to do is grab the template, lay it on so we know exactly where this odd peculiar shape needs to sit, transfer in the guidelines and then what we can do is simply just glue all those pieces together and slot it in like that. So right, it's starting to look a lot more like a Lancer and we've got a lot more detail still to go. But for the most part, we're really starting to flesh it out and build up those detail and those layers that we need to really make it look like the signature rifle we're trying to make it be. So that's it. Hopefully you guys managed to follow along and it wasn't too difficult. The narration and the footage process definitely showed you how you're going to go about continuing this when we go ahead and tackle the more intense detail in part two.
If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. It helps me understand that you do appreciate this footage and that it does, in fact, work and it's cohesive and understanding. Therefore, I can continue to build the tutorials more like this going forward. Otherwise, congratulations on all those people that are currently building and are going to continue forward. Go ahead, click part two, and enjoy the rest of your build. Thank you very much, guys. Catch you later.